Good morning all. So myself, Manas Kumar Bandera, Assistant Professor Suresh Gyan Vihar University, Jaipur. So today we will discuss about the canning and concept and standard. Canning of fruits and vegetables. So the content of the slides is introduction about the canning, principle of canning, food that are canned, canning processing, foliage of canned product, Containers for packing of canned product, equipment used in canning process. First one is introduction. So canning is defined as the preservation of foods in hermetically sealed containers and usually implies key treatment as the principal factor in prevention of spoilage. So normally, what we have to do hermetically sealed pack to containers we have to follow means in box we can use the box air we can use the containers that are helmet means the air will not go inside that containers so that we can air will not go and any bacteria will not go inside that containers so like this we have to seal the containers canning was invented by nicholas apart in 1910 so also termed as appetization so canning is also known as appetization. Food that are canned. So normally there are three types of foods that are normally we have to go for canning. So it is based on the pH of the food. Like first one is low acid foods. In low acid foods, the pH is 5 to 6.8, and it is mainly used for the meat, fish, poultry. Dairy. This last group is commonly re referred to as the low acid group because the PSS content is 5 to 6.8. Next is acid foods, which the pH is 4.5 to 3.5. Means pH is 4.5 to 3.7 means the pH is less, so acidity is more. The fruits such as pear, orange, apricot, tomatoes fall in this class. Next is high acid foods. So high acid foods such as pickled product and fermented foods. The pH is 3.7 to down to 2.3. Means 2.3, 3.7 pH. The fruits that is comes under the high acid foods like jam, jellies are classified into the high acid foods. So these are the different types of foods based on their acidity. Principle of canning. The major principle of canning is to reduce the spoilage of microorganisms within a container by the means of heat. Means when we pack the foods into a container, so there is a chance of spoilage in there. So we have to reduce the spoilage by using the heat. That is the main principle of canning. It is canning process. In canning process, first we have to go for selection of fruits and vegetables. After that, we will go for grading. Grading based on size, shape. we have to go for grading. Then we go for washing of the fruits. Then we go for peeling. In the skin, we have to remove. After that cutting, we have to cut into the small parts. Next, we go for blanching. Blanching means we keep the fruits and vegetables in hot water for some time. Then after that, we will go for cooling, peeling and syrup. Filling and syrup for grinding, we can use the syrup solution or drying solution. After that, we go for exhausting. Exhausting means whatever the air is present in that, that air we have to remove. Means in the container, some air is remaining in that container. We will not fill the complete container. So that air we have to remove. Then we go for sealing. We have to seal that. Air. Then processing, cooling, and storage. And mango slices. How we prepare the and mango? So we have to select the ripe mango fruits. After that, we go for washing of the fruits. After washing, we will go for peeling. Peeling means after the skin we have to remove, we remove the seeds. Cut into the longitudinal slices. Then we cut into the slices. Peeling in the plain can container syrup containing 40 degree bricks and 0.3% acidity. 
means we will keep into the syrup solution in that of 40 degrees the sugar syrup and 0.5 percent is acidification here after that we will we will go for exhausting exhausting means we use the 82 to 85 degree centigrade temperature for 6 to 10 minutes so whatever the air is present in that it will go exhausting means it will be removed then we go for semi after that we will go for processing so processing in a 10 degree centigrade temperature for 30 minutes we will go for processing next is cooling after cooling next is storage so these are the cans you can see in that mango slices you can store next is process so in process i already told you the flow chart so according to that flow chart only we will start so first process is selection of the fruits and vegetables so fruits and vegetables should be absolutely fresh means whatever the fruits we have to select they are fresh fruits should be ripe but firm and uniformly mature all ripe fruits should be rejected because they are infected with microorganisms and give a poor quality product unripe fruits should be rejected because they are generally shriveled and tough on canning means normally we have to select the fruits which are ripe but firm and uniform mature fruits we have to select and ripe fruits overripe fruits that all we have to reject all vegetables except tomatoes should be tender whatever the vegetable we have to select we have to select a tender tomatoes should be found fully ripe and on deep red color whatever tomato we have to select that is fully ripe and deep red color fruits and vegetables should be free from the means Dust are not there, and that to protect anything is not there. They should be free from the premises, insect types, and mechanical injury. Sometimes, what will happen? There is a type of some insect, so they are free from that insect types, mechanical, there will be no any mechanical injuries, and there is no any damage are not there. Like this, we have to select the fruits and vegetables. Second is grading. The selected fruits and vegetables are graded according to the size and color to obtain the uniform quality. So normally if we select the fruits, if we not go for grading, then what will happen? The quality will be not uniform because some fruits are small size, some fruits are big size. If we make the slices, that is also some are small, some are big. So to make the uniform quality, what we have to do? We have to go for grading. This is done by hand or by machine such as through grader or roller grader. So we can by hand we can go for grading or we can use the screw grader we can use or we can use the roller. Fruit like berries, pulp and cherries are graded whole. Like berries, berries are small size, berries are there. So that complete and cherries that complete we have to select. Means in that we have to not go any grading. While peaches, pear, apricot, mangoes, pineapples are generally graded after cutting into the pieces of slices. So in mango and in these we have to do first we make the slices and after that we go for grading. Next is washing. It is important to remove the pesticides, spray the additional residues and dust from the fruits and vegetables. So normally what will happen the farmers they will grow the fruits and vegetables and they will spray the pesticides and that pesticides are remain in the outer surface of the fruits and vegetables. So what we have to do? Before we go for what before we go for canning, we have to go for washing of the fruits. So that whatever the pesticide is spread there, whatever the chemicals are present in that fruits and that we have to remove. One gram of soil contains one zero one two force of microorganisms. Therefore, the rule of microorganisms by washing with water is essential. In one gram, so we have to remove. Fruits and vegetables can be washed in different ways. Root crops that loosen in soil are washed by soaking into the water containing 25 to 50 ppm of chlorine. So normally in root vegetables like carrot, radish, potato, and turnip. So these all are what we have to do. They have to we have to keep them into the 25 to 50 ppm of chlorine solution and then we go for washing. Other method of washing are spray washing. Steam washing. So these are the different methods we can use for the washing. Next is peeling. Peeling means normally we remove the outer layer of the 
fruits and vegetables of the skin we have to remove. If the seeds are present, that seeds we have to remove. That is called as peeling. So peeling we have to do by different methods. Like we can use the hand peeling. By the hands we have to remove the outer skin. Steam peeling we can use. Mechanical peeling is also available. Mechanically they will peel the fruits and vegetables. And lay peeling we have to use. So these are the four methods we use for the peeling. After peeling, next is cracking. The pieces of the size required for the canning are cut. Seed, stone, and core are removed. So we cut the fruits and we remove the seed, stone, or core we have removed because that is not used for the canning purpose. Fruits like pulp, which the seeds cannot be taken out easily, are canned whole. Means in some fruits, complete, completely we have to use. So in that what we have to do, if we are using the completely means, we have to not take out the any, any score and all we have to not take out. Next is blanching. Blanching is usually done in case of vegetables. Blanching is normally done in case of vegetables only by exposing them into the boiling water or steam by 2 to 5 minutes followed by cooling. Means what we have to do, we have to expose the vegetables into the cold water. After exposing to the hot water, we have to means keep them into the cool temperature because first we give the hot temperature, then we give the cool temperature. What is the importance of blanching? So blanching is most of the plant enzymes which are toughness, discoloration, mustiness of flavors, softening, and lose the nutritive value. Reduces the number of microorganisms by means such as 99%. If we keep the vegetables into the hot water, then what will happen? Whatever the microorganisms are there, that we have to reduce. Means it will be reduced almost 99%. After that, we have to go for cooling. If we are keeping into the hot solution, then we go for cooling. So after blanching, the vegetables are dipped in the cool cold water, cold water for the better handling and keeping them into the good condition. So just after then blanching means blanching means normally we use hot water. After that, we will keep into the cold water. Why we keep into the cold water? So that we can easily handle that. What are there means it is difficult to handle. Next is filling. Before filling, can are washed with hot water and sterilized. So whatever the can we are using, first we have to wash them, then we go for the sterilization. Automatic, automatic large can filling machines are used in advanced countries. But the choice Layers of fruits are normally filled by hand to prevent the bruising in the to prevent the bruising in India. Hand filling is common practice. So normally in other countries like in developed country, we they use the machines we they use for filling. But in India normally we can use the hand filling only. After filling, covering with syrup or time is done, and this process is called syruping or blinding. After complete filling, we have to keep the syrup or brine solution. Add space left inside the ranges of 0.3 to centimeter to 0.47. So, like if you purchase the any bottled product, like uh, any cold drink, if you purchase it in the market, so you can see that some space are there in there. That is called as some space means they are not completely filled. There is some space are there that is called as heavy space. So we have to keep that head space. If we not keep that head space, so there is a attack means uh, the air will means uh, the, there is a chance of spoilage of that particular product. So we have to keep the head space and we have to remove the oxygen content in that head space and we add the next is exhaustion. The process of removal of air from the can is known as exhaustion. So we have to remove the air. Because we have to keep the head space from that head space, we have to remove the air. After filling and building or clinching, adjusting is essential. Means after filling, we have to keep the lid in that, we have to wear the lid in that, and then we have to go for adjusting. So it is the major advantage of adjusting are porosity of the thin plate and pin holding during storage is avoided. Minimize the discoloration by preventing the oxidation because if the oxygen is present in there, that oxygen due to that oxygen, the discoloration will be occurred. 
तो वी कैन कंट्रोल दैट हेल्प इन बेटा रिटेंशन ऑफ विटामिन पर्टिकुलरली विटामिन सी प्रिवेंट द मींस नॉर्मली विटामिन सी मींस इट विल बी यू कांट स्टोर द विटामिन सी फॉर लोगों के लिए बहुत है टू मेंटेन दैट वी हैव टू गो प्रिवेंट द बिल्डिंग ऑफ टेंस रेंज स्टोर्ड इन हॉट क्लाइमेट एंड एट हाई एल्टीट्यूड हाई एल्टीट्यूड रिड्यूस द केमिकल रिएक्शंस बिटवीन द कंटेनर्स एंड कंटेन समटाइम व्हाट विल हैपन If we not use a particular container, so the chemical reaction will be occurs between the container and the can, and they will damage the means to our product. Prevents the development of excessive pressures and strain during the sterilization. Adjusting method we use the two methods we use we use the thermal adjusting like steam or vacuum we use and mechanical adjusting we use the machine vacuum. After the adjusting, we have to go for the sealing. Immediately after the adjusting, the cans are sealed airtight by means of can sealer. So we use the can sealer. With the help of can sealer, we have to seal the can airtight. In case of glass jars or rubber ring, should be placed between the mouth of the jar and the lid so that it can be sealed airtight. Glass jar or rubber ring should be placed. During the sealing, the temperature should not fall below 74. Means the sealing temperature is 74 degrees centigrade. We have to make it. It is not less than 74 degrees centigrade. After sealing, we have to go for processing. The heating of the foods by preserving is known as processing. Heating of the foods for preserving is known as processing. Means after preserving means everything we have to get. Then again we have to provide the heat. The can must be processed or heat heated immediately after closing. Hermetically sealed at suitable time and temperature. Food to be canned is heated on the one hand by bacterial spoilage if under process, and on the other hand, danger of lower the nutritive quality by overheating. So normally, what we have to do when we go for Processing. So, cans normally we have to do there is a chance of bacterial spoilage. For some time, nutritive value will be reduced if there is a overheat. So, normally we have to do the a particular heating only. If the overheat will be there, it will reduce the quality of our product. Like vegetative bacteria are killed in 80 degrees centigrade temperature for 30 minutes. So the vegetative bacteria spore forms at temperature of 110 degrees centigrade. By 30 minutes. For destroying the spores, we use the 121 degree centigrade temperature for three minutes. These are the three temperatures and their timing. After processing, we have to go for cooling. So, as I told you, the processing temperature is so much. Means it is processing temperature. I told you it is means above 74 degree centigrade temperature. We are using means 80 degree, 110 over 120 degree centigrade. So after that we have to cool that. So immediately after processing, the can are cooled in water to a temperature of 36 to 42 to avoid the thermophilic spoilers or can rust. So thermophilic spoilers reduce when you get the heat means we have to reduce the temperature 36 to 42. If the cans are cooled much below 36 degrees centigrade, they may look dry, dry, and rusting when heated. So 36 degrees maximum, not less than 36, not more than 42. If the cans are placed at temperature of more than 42, the thermophilic spoilers may occur. If the temperature is more than 42, means thermophilic spoilers due to more temperature, and if less than 36, means there is a rusting wear will be occurs. After that, we will go for storage. After labeling the can, they should be packed in a storage box. Storage wooden cases or corrugated cardboard cartons and stored in a cool or dry place. Stored wooden cases we can use or we can use the cardboard. The outer surface of the can should be dry, as even small trays of the moisture sometimes reduces the rusting. Storage of can at high temperature should be avoided. As it shortens the shelf life of product and often leads to formation of hydrogen 
very so these are the different sweat level study in next chapter means next phase so that is the occurs certain studies so these are the cell cell i told you spoilers of can product so there is a four types like soft swell hard swell flicker spring stringer and leaker soft swell means a can that is left on the both ends but not so tightly that the end can't be pushed in some time in some what with a thumb pressure hard swell means a can that is so tightly left on the both ends that the ends can't be pressed in means we have to tightly in both sides soft swell means only one side that both sides flippers a can whose end normally looks flat but flip out when step sharply on one end stringers a can with one end left out with sufficient pressure this end will flip in but the other end will flip out leaker a can with a crack or hole in the containers that has casually that has caused leakage so these are the cans you can see when we go for canning these are the different types of spoilers i told you the swell soft swell like first one is called soft swell in soft swell means it is standing one side it is cell in second means both side we have to like right? means for upper side also lower side also that is called as hard swell and third one is flipper So in flippers, like first one, third one, in third meaning is these are the flippers we use. These are the flippers we use, like springer. So springer we use, like this one is springer. Fourth one is, and fifth one is leaker. So the fifth one leaker means this type of product will be occurs. Containers for packaging of end product. So different type containers we use for packaging. Both tin and glass containers are used in canning industries, but in tin containers are preferred. Tin containers are more preferred than in glass containers. Can be supplied from one area to the another area. There is a chance of leakage. Tin containers. Tin cans are made up of thick steel plate of low carbon content, lightly coated on both sides with thick metal. It is difficult to coat a steel plate uniformly, and during the process of manufacture, now microscopic spots are always left uncoated. Although the coating may appear appear preferred to the the content of the can may react with these uncoated spots, resulting in discoloration of the product. and corrosion of the tin plate it is necessary therefore to coat the to coat the inside of the can with some materials which prevents the discoloration but does not affect the flavor of all sections of the container this process is known as lacquering in lacquering what what we have to do we have to Use some materials like lacquers. We use that lacquers will prevent the discoloration, but does not affect the flavor and wholesomeness of the content. Type of cans. So there is a different types of cans we use, like three piece can and two piece can depends on the shapes we use. Three piece can and aluminium cans and steel cans we use depending on the materials. Like aluminium can be used, or it can use the steel cans. Three piece cans consist of three components: a bottom lid, a cylindrical body, a top lid, a lid with a lip and opening on the side. Like in first image, you can see these are three piece cans. Two piece can consist of two components: a body integrated with a bottom lid. And a lid with a lip and opening, like you can see here. The lid is having an opening. 
and second first one the body integrated with the bottom lip and in this you can see a bottom lip a bottom lip a cylindrical body these are the cylindrical body and the top a lid with lip hole and opening so some like in this they have the openings also like this they have the openings aluminium can still can depending upon the materials we can use either we can use aluminium cans or we can use the steel cans to prevent this collision lacquering is done there is a two type of lacquers we use acid resistant and sulfur resistant the acid resistant means we can call as R enamel or AR cans if they are coated with this or called as R enamel R means acid resistant enamel or AR cans main for the high acid food commodity they are mainly meant for the high acid food commodity like Raspberry, strawberry, and apricot. Second one is sulfur resistance. Sulfur resistance means they are called as C enamel. C enamel can be coated with this, known as C enamel, sulfur resistance or SR cans, made for the low acid foods like peas, corns, and beans. So these are two types: acid resistant and sulfur resistant. Sulfur resistance means they are called as C enamel, and they are mainly used for the low acid foods. And acid resistance, they are called as R enamels, and they are mainly used for the high acid food commodity. These are the equipment used in canning: continuous rotatory pressure sterilizers. These are mainly used for the canning purpose. Spray washer. In this, we have to wash the fruits or commodity by the spraying the water. Mechanical grader. So in which we have to grade the fruits based on their size. So these are the different different components are there. In that, thus according to the size, we have to collect the fruits and we have to go for grading. Like this, these are the different different sizes are there according to that. Next is pillars. In pillars, we use the we have to peel the fruits like we have to remove outer skin of the fruits with the help of pillars. Next is can peeling machine. So normally this is the machine we use for the peeling the ends. Next is adjusting. So these are the adjusting. We have to give the high temperature, seventy four degrees centigrade temperature. We have to adjust the air. Next is sealing and cleaning. So normally we have to seal the product with sealing machine. Next is advantage of canning. So these are the main efficient and long shelf life. And means we can store them for the two to twenty-five years. It will increase the shelf life of the product. No cold chain during the transportation. If they are hermetically sealed, means there is no required of during. No cold chain is required. Normally we can transport. Do not need to keep them in refrigerator. We can't keep them into the refrigerator. So lower energy expenditure when heating due to the storage at room temperature. Easy to store, and they are quick to repair. Great stability compared to the traditional method. We can store them for the longer period of time. Hundred percent of the tin can is completely recycled and feed straight back into the material cycle. Easy opening due to the full of heat. They can easily open them. Few or no pressure, no preservation used in the preservation of high quality. So these are the different importance, major advantage of canning. Thank you. These are all about the canning. Thank you. Hello, myself Manoj Kumar Gundala, Assistant Professor Suresh Gyan Vihar University, Jaipur. So in continuation of the last topic, in this topic we will discuss the Drying and dehydration of fruits and vegetables. So first, we will discuss the definitions of drying and dehydration. Drying is the oldest method of preservation of fruits. So normally in drying, we have to do sun drying, wind drying, or we can use the smoke fires for the drying of the fruits and vegetables. Normally, what we have to do, we have to remove the water content of the fruits and vegetables so that we can store them for the Longer period of the time. Second, fruit dehydration. Fruit dehydration is the process of removing the water from the fruit 
by circulating the hot air through it. Means in the radiation, we have to circulate the hot air. So that what is what will happen, which prohibits the growth of enzyme and bacteria. So if we circulate the hot air, what will happen? It will prohibit the enzyme and bacteria. So these are the two types: drying and dehydration. Drying is the application of heat under controlled condition to remove the water by evaporation. Means we have to provide the heat, and whatever the water is present in that particular source, it will be evaporated. Next is difference between the drying and dehydration. As you know, drying is a natural process. How we can say it is a natural process? Because in drying, normally if we use the sun drying, so sun drying means we can keep the fruits in sun and it will be dry. Heat means high temperature, the fruits and vegetables start drying. Second is dehydration. Dehydration is artificial process. Artificially, we have to supply the hot air to for the drying of the fruits and vegetables. Drying does not have any control over the climatic condition. If climatic condition it will not affect in drying, dehydration it have controlled over the climatic condition. That when dried product does not have good quality. If we go for sun drying, there is a no uniform drying is there. Normally, when we go for sun drying, what we have what will happen? Means so fruits they are exposed to the sunlight, they will dry fast. And the fruits which are not exposed to the sunlight, they will not dry. Means half will dry and half will not dry. So this is not have good quality. But in case of dehydration, the old fruits will be dry at a time. Means so they have good quality. Means all fruits are drying at a time. More space is required for drying. Less space is required because it occurs within a chamber. Means within a we can prepare one chamber in that we can supply the hot air and we can go for drying of the fruits and vegetables. So it required the less space. Contamination from dust, insects, birds are major problem because drying means normally we go for sun drying and we keep the fruits and vegetables in hot sun. So what will happen in that if insects will come, that birds will come, they will eat that our product and they will damage that. But in case of dehydration, it is completely in controlled condition. So it is not affected by the birds, insects or any other problems. Drying is less expensive. Because in sun time, normally we keep the fruits and vegetables in sun, water, sun, sun rays, so it is not expensive. But in dehydration, we have to prepare the con con conditions, we have to supply the hot air, we have to use the machines and more. So it is a expensive. Basics of drain. The goal of dehydration for drain is to remove the water without damaging. Normally, why we go for drying means just we remove the water content in a particular fruits and vegetable. So, what will happen if the water is removed, then we can store it for the longer period of the time. Drying under natural conditions, like we can use the sun or solar radiation, we can use solar drying. We can use controlled drying using an oven or dehydrator. In control, we can use the oven, we can use or dehydrator. We can use. Drying uses simple equipment. And reduces the size and weight of food, but it can take a long time and it's not suitable for all foods. Means all foods we can can't use the time, but dehydration we can use the most for the whole foods. Dried and dehydrated foods are less costly to produce. Dried and dehydrated foods are less costly to produce. Means we not have to spend so much money for drying. Drying is mostly used for two preservation. If we want to store the fruits and vegetables for longer period of the time, for that normally we use the drying. Next is principle of drying and dehydration. The basic principle is that microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, mold require water for their growth and multiplication, which causes food spoilage and leaking. Since the water as a potential vehicle for pathogen in the food chain, and it has to remove increase the self life of the food products. Means normally what will happen the bacteria, fungi and mold, they require water for their multiplication. So if we remove the water from the fruits and vegetables, so their multiplication will be stored and we can store them for the longer period of the time. Drying and dehydration is a added process. A 
applicable for the all food material such as fruits, vegetables, cereals, pulses, milk, meat, etc. to remove the moisture content. Like we can say in market, diet fruits are also available, vegetables are also available, cereals they are diet only, milk like powdery milk is available, meat, fish that all are available in diet food in market. Now moisture is an important factor in agriculture. Agricultural and food material affect the shelf life of the produce, which due to microbial spoilers, oxidation, and physical structures of the food. So, these you can see the dried products like dried pulp, plum, dried pea, dried banana, dried apricot, dried apple, dried papaya, dried grapes, dried peach, dried pea. So, these are the different dried fruits. Is the flow chart of time. Flow chart means how we can go for time. So, first is fruits. We have to select the fruits. Fruits, which type of fruits we have to select? We have to select the fruits which are not affected by any insect, pest damage, or if it is fresh fruits. It is not have any type of injuries, bruising is not there. After that, we will go for washing of the fruits. After washing, preparation, preparation of the fruits, then pre treatment. We have to do the pre treatment. Spreading of the tray. After spray treatment, we have to spread them on the tray we can use and then we go for time of dehydration. After that, post drying and dehydration treatment we will give, then we go for packaging and next is storage. Fruit drying right. Like apple. In apples, the peel, core and slice into eight by three inches rings, or cut into one by four inches sizes. The pre treatment heat and dry 6 to 12 hours until liable. So this is the application only we use in apple for drying of the apple. Since we have to remove the core and all, then we will go for drying. Next is apricot. Apricot will be dry, cut in half and turns inside out to dry. Heat it and dry to 8 to 20 hours until liable. Means it required 8 to 20 hours, just we cut it, so that we will give a pre treatment and then we will go for dry. Bananas being cut into 1 by 4 inch slices and pre treat, dry 8 to 16 hours until the pliable or almost crisp. Blueberries drying 10 to 20 hours until leathery. And cherries cut in half and dry 18 to 26 hours until the leathery and like a sticky. Peaches peel the hull for a quarter, pre it and dry 6 to 20 hours until fly. Peels peel cut into 1 by 4 inches slices, pre it drying 6 to 20 hours until gathering. Pineapple core and slice 1 by 4 inches thick, dry 6 to 16 hours until gathering and sticky. So these are the guidelines for a particular fruits like in apple if we go for drying then how we can go for drying in apple if we go for banana blueberries. This is drying in apple fruits. So how we go for drying in apple, particularly in apple. First is selection of firm fruits, we have to select the fruits. After that we go for washing of the fruits, then we go for peeling, peeling means we remove the outer skin and we remove the core. Core and slices into 3 by 8 inches. So we remove the core and then we slice it by the 3 by 8 inches we have to slice that. After that we go for pre-treatment. Pre-treatment means any darkening solution we can use for the pre-treatment. After pre-treatment we spread them on the tray. We can use the tray. In that tray we can spread that. Then we can go for drying 6 to 12 hours. We can keep into the drying place and after that after drying we will go for packaging and then we will go for storage. Next is arm Amchur means we can say the raw mango powder. So how we prepare amchur? First we select the mature green mangoes we select. After that we go for washing, peeling and cut into the slices. After that for outer skin we have to remove, we remove the seeds. Then after that we have to cut into the slices and dip into the 2% salt solution for one hour. After that we keep into the 2% of salt solution for one hour. And drain and dip into the 0.4% KMS solution for 2 hours. After that, we keep into the KMS solution, 0.4% KMS solution for 2 hours. 
dry slices at 15 to 16 degrees centigrade. After that, we go, we will go for drying of 15 to 16 degrees centigrade temperature. Powder dried slices in meal. After that, fill into the air tight containers. After that, we fill into the after that the powder we have been prepared, then we keep into the air tight container and store into the dry place. So this is the procedure for preparation of the armchair. It is mainly prepared from the raw mango powder. Next is drying of banana. In banana, what we have to do first, we go for selection of the fruits. After selection, we will go for washing of the fruit. Then we will go for peeling. Then slices. We will make the slices of 12 mm thick. Then spread on the tray. We can use the tray. In that, we can spread. Sulfuring we can do. 1.8 to 3.6 kg per ton. Sulfuring we can do. Means we can export. Means we require require. Means we. Heat them by the sulfur sulfurs. Dry until the pliable or crispy. After that, we will go for drying, then we go for packaging, and then we will go for storage. Next is banana flour. So, how we prepare the banana flour? For that, we have to select the first to select the banana. So, in that, we can select the, we can select the green banana also, we can select the natural banana also, we can select the unripe banana also. We can select. After selection of the banana, we will go for washing. For washing, we will wash the surface of the banana. After that, we will go for steaming. Steaming is 10 to 15 minutes. We will go for steaming. Then removal of the peel. We remove the peel. Slices, 3 mm thickness slices we will make. After that, we will soak it into the 0.2% KMS solution for 30 minutes. We will keep the slices into the 0.2% solution, KMS solution for 30 minutes. After that, we will go for drying. Drying normally the temperature of drying is 80 degrees centigrade temperature. And time is 6 to 8 hours. In cabinet drying, we have to do. After that, we will go for after drying, we will go for cooling. After cooling, we will go for milling, means we will make the powders. After making the powders, we have to mess it. Mess it means swing we can do and then we can prepare the flow. So this is the procedure for preparation of banana flow. Next, drying in. Anola fruit. Anola fruit. So in this part we have to do first we have to select the fruits after that we will go for washing. Washing after washing cut into the shared or pieces. We have to cut into the pieces. Then we will go for pre-treatment after pre-treatment spread on that tray. After spreading on that tray, same procedure we can use drying into 12 to 28 hours. In 12 to 28 hours we have to go for drying. After drying to the mint, it will be pliable. Till that, we will go for drying. After drying, we will go for packaging and then we can store it to the local people of the time. So, this is you can see the dried canola. Next is pre treatment. Some fruits need to have their enzyme inactivated before drying. Some fruits need to have their enzyme. Means some fruits, what we have to do, their enzymes are present in them. So that we have to push inactivate. After that, we will go for drying. Especially fruits oxidize when exposed to the air. Some fruits, what will happen if they are, we expose them into the air? So the oxidation process will be started, like in case of banana apple. In banana, what will happen? Banana is a climatic fruit. Climatic fruit means, means if we harvest the unripe banana, it will get ripe after some time. Due to the process of the production of ethylene. So, if it will expose to the sunlight, then what will happen? The enzyme activity, whatever the enzymes are present, they will active continuously, they are active. In mango, also in banana, also in own climatic fruits, the enzymes are con continuously, they are active only. So, what will happen? Uh, if we not inactivate that, then what will happen? It will, there is a cause of time. So, normally, what we have to do is folic acid we can use to dip first. And it then syrup blanching or commercial acids we can use for the pre treatment. So these are the pre treatment. Then preparing of the fruit for drying. Rinse the fruit under cold running water. First, we have to preparation how we can do. Means we have to wash the fruits in running water. After that, cut away loose portion and remove the seeds. Means if some parts is affected by a particular Bruising is there, something is there affected by itself. So that we have to remove. And we have to remove the seeds. Next is pre-treatment. So pre-treatment is blanching. 
food blanching is the briefly pre cooking food in boiling water or steam and it is used to stop the enzymatic reactions within the foods blanching also shortens drying time and kills the many spoilers of organisms so what will happen in this blanching means we have to expose the fruits and vegetables into the cold water we have to boil the fruits and vegetables in cold water so it will what will happen the whatever the enzymatic activities are there it is stopped into the that cold water then we will expose to the cold water and whatever the bacteria are present in that it will also get damaged they will also die into the cold water step cold water blanching under a blanch or under a blancher or a deep pot with a tight fitting lid fill the pot two third full with water cover and bring to a rolling boil balance the fruits into a wire basket and submerge them into the boiling water for the recommended time remove the fruits and balance into the cold water to stop the cooking drain and balance the fruits on time frame so this is the procedure for water blanching so water blanching normally we will use the water after that we will go for boiling of the water we will keep our product into the boiling water then after that we can take it out and then we keep into the cooling water and then we can go for keep into the time frame step four syrup blanching in syrup blanching what we have to do combine one cup of sugar sugar we use one cup light whole corn syrup we use for two cups water in a pot we use after that we will add one pound of the fruits we will add we will prepare this solution then in this solution we will add one pound of fruits then simmer 10 minutes and we can keep into for the 10 minutes then remove the heat and keep the fruits in syrup for 30 minutes remove the fruits from the syrup rinse drain and continue with dehydration step after that we will keep take the fruits and then we will go for dehydration blanching and drying time for the selected fruits like these are the different fruits they have a particular time like in apple if we go for stem stem it will take 3 to 5 minutes in syrup it will take 10 minutes in apricot stem 3 to 4 minutes in syrup 10 minutes banana stem 3 to 4 minutes in syrup 10 minutes nectarines steam 8 minutes syrup 10 minutes peaches steam 8 minutes syrup 10 minutes peaches pears steam 6 minutes syrup 10 minutes pineapple is not necessary next is drying time drying time is different for different fruits like in apple it is drying time is 6 to 12 hours in apricot the drying time is 24 to 36 hours in banana drying time is 8 to 10 hours in nectarines 36 to 48 hours in peaches the drying time is 36 to 48 hours in pears it is 24 to 36 hours in pineapple 24 to 36 hours and in prunes also 24 to 36 hours so these are the different blanching and blanching time and the drying time for the different fruits and vegetables different fruits drying techniques so we can use the different drying method we use like sun drying we use vacuum drying we use solar drying we use Bridge dryer we use, cosmetic dehydration we use, oven dryer we use, tray dryer we use, panel dryer we use, roller or drum dryer we use, pin dryer we use, or bed dryer we can use. So these are the different techniques we use for the drying. So we will discuss them one by one. First is sun drying. In sun drying, what we have to do to dry in the sun or for dry days are best. A minimum temperature of 86 degree Fahrenheit is needed with higher temperatures being better. It takes several days for, to dry the fruits out of doors because the weather is uncontrollable. Because what we can say sometimes there is a sunlight or so much sunlight are there, the temperature is low. Sometimes due to the clouds, the temperature will be reduced. So it is a uncontrollable. Weather is uncontrollable. So it will take so much time. Sometimes there is more sunlight in there, sometimes there is less sunlight in there. So it is uncontrolled. Sun drying can be risky. Also, the high humidity in south is problem. Sometimes what will happen due to the high humidity in south is there is humidity is more. So 
time will not occur because it requires continuously high temperature. Humidity below 60% is best for sun drying. The humidity is less than 60% is the best. So sun drying with some other method means uh, infidelity also there in sun drying. If it is more for sun drying, the insect will damage, the insects, birds will come and they will take that whatever we go for them, so they will also get damage. So that is also the side effect of sun drying. Next is vacuum drying. In vacuum drying is an important process for heat sensitive materials. The process of vacuum sun drying can be considered according to the physical condition used to add heat and remove the water vapor. Means in vacuum drying we have to expose to the vacuum means we have to drying vacuums we have to do and whatever the water contained in that that we have to remove. Low temperature can be used under the vacuum to a certain method that might discolor or decompose at high temperature. It is considerable too costly for the large scale production of sunlight because it will take so much time and it is costly also. So it is not used. Next is solar drying. Solar drying recent effort to improve in sun drying have led to solar drying. Solar drying is also uses the sun as a heat source. We use the sun as a heat source. A foil surface inside the dehydrator helps to increase the temperature. Ventilation speed up the drying time. If we go for ventilation speed, the time of ventilation speed will be increased the drying time. Shorter the drying time reduces the risk of food spoilers and mold growth. If it, the time, time will be increased, there is a more chance of food spoilers and mold growth. So what we have to do? We have to reduce the time. So the solar drying is also better, better for the drying of the food spoilers. Next is freeze drying. Freeze drying also known as cryo desiccation. It is a dehydration process typically used to preserve a perishable materials or make the material more convenient for the transport. Freeze drying works by the freezing the materials and then reduces the surrounding pressure to allow the frozen water into the material. To, sub, to sublimate directly from the solid phase to the gas phase. So normally we use the freezers we use, in freezers we have to keep the fruits and we will transport into the one area to the another area. So it will also increase the time, it can store it for the longer period of the time. Cosmetic time. Cosmetic time means osmosis is known as a partial dehydration process. Although it does not remove the enough moisture to be considered as a bad product, the process has the advantage of requiring a little energy. It works well as a pre-treatment prior to the drying by the other methods. The advantage of cosmetic drying is the lower the energy used and the lower the product thermal damage. Since lower temperature used allow the retention of the Nutrients. In osmotic then we were using the lower temperature, so it will retention of the nutrients will be of us. The main advantage of osmotic drying is the reduction of process temperature, sweeter taste of dehydrated products, reduction of 20 to 30 percent energy consumption, and shorter the drying time. Next is oven drying. Oven is ideal for occasional drying of fruits, leathers. It may take, may not be satisfactory for preserving abundant water produced. Oven drying is a slower than dehydrator because it does not help a build in pan or the air movement. However, some convection ovens do not have fan. It takes about two time longer for the drying of fruits as an oven than it does not it does in a dehydrator. The oven is not as sufficient as a dry dehydrator and uses more energy. Means normally we will use the not use the oven because it is a more energy, it requires more energy and the whatever the diet product is there that is also the quality is not so much good.
spread air. In way, the fruits spread out thinly, heating may be by an air current sweeping through the tray by conduction from heated trays or heated sleeves on which they lies. Most tray dryers heated by air which are also into the moist papers. In tray dryer, what we have to do? We will use the air only. We will, we will expose the into the air only. So if we expose to the air only, so it will remove the paper printed, moisture printed, it will be removed. Panel dryer. So these may be regards at a development of the tray in which the trays from rolls move through the a tunnel means normally we will use the when a tunnel we use so like this this is a tunnel in this tunnel we have to means the fruits are exposed to the means we will keep the fruits here and it will go into the tunnels in that tunnels what will happen there is a good temperature means the air air will be flow and due to that flow of the air means what air flow flow it will get dry that is because tunnel dry we use Is roller or drum dryer. Drum dryer. In case the fruit is spread over the surface of heated drum, the drum rotates with the fruits being applicable to the drum at its one part of the cycle. The food remains on the drum surface for the greater part of rotation, during which the time that the time the drying takes place and it and is the scrap of drum tire may be regarded as a protection tire. Wind tires. In wind tires, the food stuff is contained in a bin with a perforated bottom, bottom through which warm air is blown vertically upwards and passing through the materials and so drying it. So we will use one bin. In that bin we have to keep the fruits and vegetables, then we will pass warm the hot air, and if that air the hot air, the fruits will start dying. Very rare. So if the fruit is spread as a thin layer on a horizontal mess for a solid bag, and air passes In most cases, the bag is moving through the sun design and the bag is stationary and the material is transported by the scrapers. Factors affecting the drying rate. So these are the different factors like temperature. If the temperature is more, the drying will be fuzzy. If the temperature is less, the drying will be late. Velocity of air, if the air will be falling in a hostile manner, then it will die early. If the air is really less, then it will be at less time. Surface area. Whatever the surface area we use, that will also affect the means we are using the soil, we are using the soil, soil only we are for, for drying, or we are using the any thin materials we are using, or any plastic material we are using. The size of product means which product we are using for the drying purpose. Stay load means in how much quantity we are keeping. If we keep the one by one quantity, then what will happen? It will take so much time. Means upper layer will be dry and lower layer will not dry. So that is also the relative humidity of air as I already told you the relative humidity will be more so it will take more time for dry. The relative humidity will be less, it will take less time for dry. Like in South India the relative humidity is more so they will, it will take more time and in North India the relative humidity is less so it will take less time for dry. Changes during dry. Food material do not have perfect elasticity and water Perfect layer and water is not removed even through the food. It is dried for the shrinkage. Due to the high surface temperature and unbalanced drying, the dry skin will form and causes hardening. Sometimes what will happen due to the high temperature, the unbalanced drying will occur. Like we will keep the food in a tray and sunlight will come, the upper surface will be dry early, lower surface will be not dry properly. So what will happen? It will cause the hardening of the foods. In first, in third, enzymatic joining of the product due to the poor cleansing. 
So normally in Nepal and all we will go for blanching. If the blanching is not in proper manner, so what will happen? There is a the enzymatic grounding will be done. The color of the fruits will be changed. Loss of volatile flavors constituents like whatever the flavor of there is that particular fruits and vegetable it will also change. Partial loss of some essential nutrients like vitamin C. If we go for drying of any fruits and vegetable due to high temperature, the vitamin C will be lost. That is also effect. Benefit of dried fruits. Dried fruits are good source for photophytochemicals. Dried fruits are an important source of antioxidants in the diet since they have they contain more of antioxidants. Dried fruits such as prune, prunes provide acting a solution fiber that may lower the blood cholesterol. Actin content is more and fibers are there which will reduce the blood cholesterol. Dried fruits such as resins are a source of very prebiotic compound in the diet. Dried apricot and peaches are good source of carotene, carotenoids. Dried fruits contain organic acid such as tartaric acid, resins and sugar alcohol such as sorbitol. How dryness of fruits can be determined? The drying of the fruits can take anywhere from 6 hours to 10 6 hours to 10 for a small pieces of 10 to 12 hours for large juice fruits such as peaches and apricot. In 6 hours so we can use for the small piece, small piece the size of the piece that we are using for drying is a small piece then it will get 6 hours and 10 to 12 hours for the juicy fruits we can use for the size is big. Dried fruits will be leathery, won't stick it to itself. Cut fruits should have not visible moisture inside, so it may be soft. After drying, it may be start soft. So this is all about the drying and dehydration. Thank you all. Thank you.